Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. Welcome back to another video. I will tell you, I am missing boat projects. That is something I never thought I would ever say in my life. Boat projects can be tedious and cumbersome and when you're in the middle of them, you curse a lot and, and yet I haven't had the boat here in a while and I'm looking for projects to do. I had thought about all the things I could potentially build for the boat in advance of it being here and I don't have a whole lot else I can get done, but man, I sure would like to be able to go out every morning and put a coat of varnish on, because uh, I know after a year of sitting in Louisiana, it's gonna need it. Um, hell, I just hope I don't have to go all the way down to bare wood. But either way, I'm looking for a project. Uh, that meant I spent too much time on YouTube. That meant I found these crazy uh, epoxy projects you can do, uh, specifically with like glasses, like stainless steel tumblers. Um, and I thought it would be kind of fun to make some tumblers with maybe our boat logo or our names on them or something like that. But because I miss projects, it's not just about the cup, it's all about what we can do to make it work. So for anyone who's ever seen one of these, you probably know it requires what they call a tumbler turner. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of turners. I ordered a few small AC um, motors off of Amazon, they should be here later today. And I thought I'd get started by uh, cutting out the wood. Um, so, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I don't have a whole lot of plan so far. I picked up a couple of items I need, uh, some cords with switches, because I want to be able to turn the motors on and off. I think I'm going to make two of these, because it feels like if you're going to make one, you may as well make two. I got some screws to assemble everything. I got some PVC, which will essentially do the rotation, and the tumbler would sit on that. Um, I got a wooden dowel, just because I think I'm going to probably need that to attach the motors to the PVC. And then when it comes to what do we think this thing is going to look like, well, let me show you. Here's kind of what I'm thinking. But essentially a flat piece of wood with a small housing that sits right here. Let's call it a little brace that sits here. A, PV, a motor mounted on the inside back here. And this PVC that's going to come all the way through the housing to here. And I'll put some kind of a foam thing on here to hold it. I don't know, maybe a pool noodle, a Nerf football, a tennis ball. I don't, I'm not sure what yet. I'll figure it out. That feels simple enough. Let me get the saw out. I'll go ahead and get these things all cut up. Probably won't show all that. I'm just going to get them all cut up and stacked right here, and then we'll start figuring out how we assemble it. I love doing projects like this where you don't have a whole plan. Heck, I don't even have the motors yet, but I know the motor is not going to be six inches tall, and I know I want this, uh, from this height here, I'm, I'm going to want this thing probably, you know, four inches or so off of the top of the, off the um, base of this. Just think about a tumbler. Most of them aren't going to be more than three inches wide, so I just need it to be above that, make it half the distance from there down. So if I make it four inches tall, that should give me a lot of flexibility for things I can put in it. All right, so that makes sense. Um, by the way, the reason that you may build this with the motor turning it, um, we'll put epoxy over the top of these things. And in order to keep the epoxy from running, if you slowly rotate it the whole time, it sort of smooths it out. Now you can do all kinds of cool things with, um, with the design too, if you wanted with, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, alcohol inks that, that blend around and give it this sort of galaxy look or, or some kind of a, a psychedelic or funky look. But at the end of the day, I don't think I want to do any of that. I probably would just paint them a single color, um, you know, white or black, because uh, I'm a simplistic kind of guy, and then put some kind of a logo on it. Um, go hijack my wife's cricket machine, figure out how to make a logo that would be good and printable and then epoxy over the top of it so it could be dishwasher safe or anything else for people. We had some friends that just bought a, uh, a new sailboat um, and I was playing around with their logo. I, I took a picture of the side of their boat and I played around with it. I think I could probably make them some, maybe I shouldn't say that, I think I could make them some nice cups though, which would be kind of cool. All right, let's get all this stuff cut up. Be back in a minute. We got our pieces cut. Um, I cut a few extras. These might be for stands. I don't know yet. These might be lids. I don't really know yet, but I figured I'd cut a couple extra. So I have four of those pieces at five inches, four at six by six, and four at six by 21. And those will double up as my base. Probably don't even need to double them, but that's what I did anyway. Um, yeah, so let me kind of show you what I'm thinking here. So this is basically what I'm thinking. I've got my uh, my piece, 6x21, and again, this is something I'm going to be doing out in the garage. It's going to get epoxy and paint on it. It doesn't have to be beautiful as far as I'm concerned. This is uh, about functionality. So let's go ahead and uh, just scooch this over a little bit. 
We're basically going to have our two pieces that are six inches wide right there, or two that are five inches wide right here. And we will close this up just like this. I'm going to drill the holes in the bottom. I'm going to drill all the holes in the side in preparation for it, but I'm not going to assemble it because I want to wait until I get the motors. I should be here any time from Amazon. Uh, because that way I can basically line up. Let me show you here. If I take my sides off, I'm going to have the motor mounted um, right on the outside with an opening in the shaft coming through, and it's going to connect to a piece of PVC that's going to come through here. I need to make sure those holes line up, so I will probably clamp these together for when I actually um, drill the holes through there. So that gives me an idea of what we need to do. Let's start by just giving myself some lines. I'm going to flip this guy over and uh, give myself my half inch lines here. If you've never used one of these things, they're phenomenal. This is a countersinking tool. You basically, it's got a, it's got a chuck that goes in the drill, and on one side is a countersink bill with, bit with a drill bit in it, and you put it in your drill, you lock it, you do all your, your uh, countersink drill holes, then you lift the latch, take it, flip it over, put it right back in, lock it, and you can attach everything with the screws. It's so quick and so easy. think about it, these are going to be set up essentially like this. So I'm going to need uh, a couple of holes. I think I might just do one on each side. Should be more than enough by the time we add the screws in the top to hold it all together. We now have pilot holes in all the ones we need. And let's just go ahead and get these cleaned up a little bit. Because it's particle board, it's always a little scrappy there. All right, so to clean these up, just using a chisel. And all I'm trying to do is get some of the, the loosened particle board from the run there off of it. Let's see. Trying to, trying to think about how I would measure this whole thing out. Now, assuming the motor is probably no more than three inches on in diameter, if I were to come down two inches from the top, put my hole there, that would give me four inches of clearance from the center point meaning I could turn something a good seven and a half inches in diameter, which should be way more than enough. So I don't want it to fit real tight, but I want it to be rather snug. What I'm trying to avoid doing is having to, to need, um, I wouldn't, I'd like to not have to have a bracket out here. And what I'm hoping is by putting a, a fairly close to the diameter of this pipe hole in this, that will essentially give me the place for this thing to rest. So I need to figure out, diameter of this guy. So it's one inches. So if I were to do a one and a quarter inch hole in this, that should uh, I went ahead and clamped the piece of wood together here, the two pieces, and I'm doing that because what I really want to make sure of is that I get the right alignment of where the center line is of the motor mount and where the hole is going to be that the PVC is going to go through. So what I'm going to do, which is going to be a little bit interesting, is I have the two clamped together, and because a paddle bit has this point in the middle, I don't want to actually drill all the way through the second one. I just want to get the point on it. Once I get that center point, then I will disassemble the two pieces, and that will allow me to leverage that center piece to get a smaller diameter, um, a smaller diameter bit for the shaft of the motor, which I know is not an inch and a quarter wide. It's probably going to be, you know, three eighths or something. So. With that, I'm now going to go ahead and start getting this drilled out. So two, set to drill. I now know it's in far enough that I'm going to have my uh, center line marked. So I'm just 
going to take these clamps off. Yep, I've got my dot there, which is perfect. That's exactly what I need for a minute or two now. See the right side for my PVC to go in there, rotate nice and freely, but not have a lot of play. So this is exactly what I want right here. Well, it's actually a couple of days later. I did get my motors, and now it's just a matter of uh, figuring out how we're going to get these little guys assembled. So let's pull them out and kind of show you what they look like, the motor kits. Um, Pretty simple here, so we just have essentially the small AC motor, which we will mount right on the outside of this box. And then we have the shaft, which attaches to that, which I can already see is going to be fun to try and attach. Because we want our PVC essentially in here, I think I'm going to basically try and attach a small piece of this dowel to the PVC. And what that'll let me do is slide the PVC on or off of it so I can remove it if I need to. I'll probably end up cutting this PVC a little shorter too. It's a little long, which is going to make it flimsy. I think I want the mug to come about here, so I'll probably cut them off right about, you know, maybe 18 inches long or so. All right, so I've cut a few of these dowels fairly small, and my thought is we will um, essentially drill a hole in them so I can put the shaft through it, put one little small screw through it, a set screw, instead of using the pieces that came with it. And that'll hold it on there. And then what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll just sand this. I have a little lathe, so I'll probably just turn it a little bit tapered so that it can fit inside of my uh, my PVC, nice and snug. And that'll be what holds it in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is just drill the holes in these. All right, we've got those in there, and now it's just going to be a matter of turning this little guy down on the lathe a bit. All right, I've tapered these down on the uh, on the lathe. I just put it in the lathe to turn it and just used a piece of sandpaper, but not even very far. They just pop in there almost like a cork. And I think what that's gonna let me do is um, allow the, the PVC to just sort of stick onto the motor. And if I need it, I can just twist and pull it off of there and do whatever I want. Okay, I found a better way to do this would be to leverage these small um, fittings that actually came with it so I can attach them to the shaft and then Drill, I did a test one here, drill a hole in the top of the actual wood where I can tap it in with a hammer. It'll fit nice and tight. So I drilled the hole bigger than the shaft, but smaller than the points on this nut. I'm gonna drive it in there and just drop some epoxy in it so it kind of fills itself up. I'll test run it without the epoxy just to see. Looking for a good way to hold these things while I drill them. on there good and tight. It's past the nuts. I don't even think I'm going to epoxy it. That feels pretty good on there. Okay, so now we're just a matter of getting this thing back in here. I'm going to slide this um, piece of wood back on, my bung, making me realize you could probably do this with a cork pretty easily. And let's just see how this looks. There we go. And that's going to hold it right in place. So. I think that looks pretty good. We're going to drill our holes for where our motor mount is. Um, just to make this easy, I'm going to pull this off. One's going to be just below the motor, where the wires go from the motor in here. The other one's where the lamp cord is going to go in. This is where we're actually going to plug it in. Run these wires right inside here. The beauty of this is it's an AC motor, so no polarity on that, which is always a little handy. Okay, next step is going to be wiring this guy up. So let's go ahead and do just that. I'm going to open up my lamp cord here. So the lamp cord I got here was truly that, a lamp cord. It has the regular plug on one side, 110 here in the US. It has one of these little rotation switches, and then it has an actual lamp socket on the end. And I have zero use for that lamp socket, so that goes away. And then we're just gonna go ahead and strip the ends of this wire. Put it through our opening here. 
and we will connect our motor. So nothing all that complex here. Um, we're basically going to connect two wires, the, the lamp cord to the actual uh, motor cord. Line this guy up. Plug her in and see what we got. Yeah, so if you watch, you notice it's rotating toward the camera. If I just stop it, it starts rotating right the other direction. Again, and it goes back. Run these on the bandsaw real quick. All right, we'll put those guys down. Yeah, I feel like that's a much better length. My mug would sit right in here. All set. Let's get this other one assembled real quick. So all in all, this was a pretty simple and easy project. And as you can see, they, um, they work just fine. Um, this one is turning toward me, this one's turning away from me. If I wanted to reverse it, again, just put a little pressure on it, and it turns around and it starts reversing. It's now coming toward me as well. So these both look like they're gonna work great. I cut them to the right length. I think I might actually try and make one of these epoxy tumblers, and uh, I'll go ahead and film that for you and show you how to do it. It's a fun and easy project. You know, I actually used a couple of pieces of scrap wood I paid uh, $18 for three motors, so all in all I'm probably at about $25 or $30 here. Now, probably more like $30 with the lamp cord. Heck, I even bought wood glue. I was going to go ahead and do these things all up real nice, put a top on it, the whole bit. And I just decided it's a utilitarian tool. Um, it's not a decorative piece. Uh, I think this will make it real nice and easy. Having this easily accessible will allow you to get in and do anything you need to in here. Yeah, fun project. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you again next Friday for another do-it-yourself video. Hopefully we'll be doing some more boat videos, but in the meantime, I don't have a boat here to do boat projects on, or at least not the big one, so we're playing with stupid stuff like tumblers. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Have fun.